Hello everybody, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good uh, evening, depending on where you are. Just a few weeks ago, at the beginning of this month, I visited Taiwan together with other scholars to attend the 17 international conference on Taoist studies in Tai Chu. And uh, it was a good opportunity after the conference had ended to visit uh, Taiji Men uh, together with a distinguished uh, British colleague, Eileen Barker, and to attend uh, several important uh, Taiji Men events. But uh, I will uh, now make some comments uh, on the conference on uh, Taoism. While open to Ditsu of all religions, Taiji Men is an ancient uh, menpai similar to a school rooted in esoteric Taoism. Taiji Men's uh, idea of uh, education and the role of its uh, Shifu or Grandmaster, Dr. Hong Daozi, also universal and not limited to a specific religion, do resonate with some of the deepest uh, principles of Taoism that we explore during the Tai Chung conference. Taoism emphasizes harmony with the natural order of the universe. Education in Taoism goes beyond the acquisition of knowledge. It encompasses the cultivation of wisdom, self-cultivation, and alignment with the Tao, the underlying principle of everything. The sage or master plays a crucial role in the Taoist education, guiding individuals on their path towards self-discovery and enlightenment. The term Shifu is traditionally reserved to sages and masters who, in addition to self-cultivation, also teach martial arts, as is the case with uh, Dr. Hong. Taoism views education as a lifelong process that extends beyond the confines of formal schooling. It recognized that true education should encompass the development of moral character. Education in Taoism is rooted in cultivating intuitive wisdom rather than merely accumulating facts and knowledge. In the end, it encourages individuals to find their own unique path, promoting self-discovery and understanding. The sage is an enlightened being who has attained deep understanding and harmonious integration with the Tao. The sage embodied the three fundamental Taoist principles, compassion, humility, and wisdom, leading by example and inspiring others to cultivate these virtues. Through their enlightened presence, the Taoist sages aid in the transformation of consciousness and encourage the integration of wisdom into daily life. Taoist education employs various methods to transmit this wisdom from master to disciple. These methods encompass both direct instructions and experiential practices. Direct instructions involve verbal teachings, discussing philosophical principles, and guiding the disciples' reflections. Experiential practices include martial arts, qigong, breathwork, and energy cultivation techniques, 
enabling students to deepen their connection with the Tao. A fundamental aspect of Taoist education lies in fostering harmony with nature and the universe as a whole. The Taoist sage teaches how to align our actions and thoughts with the flow of the universe, embracing the principle of Wu Wei, or effortless action. Through this heightened awareness of harmony, Taoist education cultivates a profound sense of inner peace and an intuitive apprehension of the fundamental unity of all things. Taoist education offers a transformative path that connects individuals with the timeless wisdom of the universe. Since the 4th century BCE, the Taoist idea of Wu Wei also referred to an ideal political system where the emperor is not directly involved in the routine of the administration, but selects honest and well-educated ministers and bureaucrats and let them manage the daily affairs of the empire. In the words of French scholar Marc Lebranchu, the emperor, quote, should act without acting. He is a model, a discrete center. People may barely know he exists, as his effectiveness radiates and harmonizes spontaneously. This may still be a valid principle today, comparable to the principle of subsidiarity in Western political thought. But as the Taiji Man case demonstrates, only work if the bureaucrats are honest. Scholars of Taoism insist that a disciple who is a man or woman of conscience and pure heart would immediately recognize a sage or spiritual master. This is the same experience Ditsu have reported so many times to us about their encounter with their Shifu. Some of them had parents who were already Ditsu. Others met Dr. Hong as adults for the first time. But all at some crucial stage of their life, recognized in Dr. Hong the spiritual master they were looking for, and one capable of giving a deeper sense to their lives. I have personally experienced, as without doubt did his Ditsi, how Dr. Hong embodies the three features of the Taoist sage compassion, humility, and wisdom. He also teaches both true words and effective experiential practices, including Qigong and martial arts. There is, however, a fourth, perhaps less frequently mentioned, the character of the Taoist sage. By studying the long history of Taoism, one encounters many masters of wisdom who were persecuted. Some were even killed. Teaching wisdom means teaching freedom, which is not always appreciated by the powers that be. It is thus not surprising that Dr. Hong also met with opposition and persecution. By resisting persecution, however, he strengthened his role as Shifu and made his Ditsu stronger. Ultimately, Taoism teaches that the fools serve a purpose in the universe, as they make the light of the sage shine by contrast. We read in the Tao Te Ching, verse 41, when a wise man hears of the Tao, he immediately begins to live it. When an average man hears of the Tao, 
He believes some of it and doubts the rest. When a foolish man hears of the Tao, he laughs out loud at the very idea. But if it were not for that law, there would be no Tao. While the fools law stupidly, believing their persecution will destroy the sages, it is the sages who have the last law. This is the story of Dr. Hong and Tai Chi Man, a story of compassion, humility, wisdom, and persecution. So with this word of introduction, which connects uh, our two experiences uh, in Taiwan, uh, I shared with all the scholars the Taoist conference and the visit to Dr. Ong and uh, Taiji Men. I would uh, start uh, the first uh, uh, session by giving the floor to Peter Zurer, who is a journalist, uh, blogger, executive director of Forum for Religious Freedom Europe, and he will also leave us after the first session as uh, he has uh, uh, another event uh, uh, he should attend. But for now, we will uh, listen carefully to Peter Zero. Peter, you are muted. Yeah, I got it. Thank you, Massimo, and thank you, Taiji Men, for inviting me. I'd also like to greet all of you and uh, also our fellow scholars and my friend, Dr. Ferrapoli from uh, South America. He is uh, my good friend. He is uh, uh, leading the coordinating IMAP, International Media Association for Peace in South America, as I do in the, and you're joining us. I feel very honored. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, the topic of my uh, presentation is hate speech, media bias, and education, a comparative analysis of the Taiji Men and Unification Church cases. There are hostile forces that fuel media campaigns against Taiji Men in Taiwan and, and the Unification Church in Japan activities. So this is presented on the occasion of the International Day of Education, the Freedom of Education. And uh, this is uh, based on Article 26 in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, so of human development, which is enshrined in the Article 26, promising access to equality education for every individual regardless of background or belief. Despite this noble commitment, the realization of this fundamental right often faces compromise, particularly for marginalized groups subjected to discrimination. This paper delves into the profound implications of hate speech and media media bias on the educational rights Taiji men in Taiwan and the Unification Church in Japan. Unraveling the intricate dynamics that undermine the educational activities. So let's talk first about Taiji men, a case of political persecution and media fueled marginalization. Taiji men was spiritual organization rooted in Taiwan since the late 90s. Allegations of tax evasion later proved false, including the land of Ma Miaoli and the Swiss mountain villa buildings near Taipei. Uh, I had the honor to visit this site and I was very touched and very shocked at the same time. These assets originally earmarked for major educational institutions within the movement 
became unavailable. Compounding this, Dr. Hong Tao Tse, the organization's leader, endured detention and a subsequent ban on foreign travel for an extended period. Ill-founded tax bills further compounded the challenges faced by Tai Chi Men. With these actions fueled by uh, political motivations, casting a long and detrimental shadow over the educational activities of its members. The, the negative portrayal of Tai Chi Men in mainstream media served to exasperate uh, exacerbate their predicament. Media outlets consistently depicted the group in a distorted and unfavorable light, perpetuating stereotypes and prejudices that isolated Taiji men members from mainstream educational communities. This uh, deleterious media coverage hindered Taiji men members' employment prospects in education and their children were often subject to discrimination and bullying within school environments. Actually terrible, huh? if you think about it. Unification Church in Japan, also there, has been combating inequity and media uh, perpetuated stereotypes. The Unification Church founded by the Reverend Dr. Sun Myung Moon in Korea in 1954, and now known as the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, or FFWPU, confronted persistent challenges in Japan. Since its founding, the movement has been targeted by discriminatory policies and hate speech. In 1997, uh, actually around this time, uh, almost parallel to Tai Chi Men, the Japanese government enacted a law prohibiting the Unification Church from operating schools. Though this law was eventually repealed, it left an indelible mark serving as a stark reminder of the church's marginalization within the educational system. Unification Church students continued to face discrimination, exclusion and harassment, impeding their access to quality education. Media bias, played a substantial role in exas exacerbating the educational challenges faced by the Unification Church members in Japan. Negative media portrayal created a hostile learning environment for the Unification Church students, discouraging their active participation in education and impeding their overall academic progress. So, uh, Actually, Article 26 uh, is a shield against educational discrimination. Uh, Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights provides a robust, a robust framework for safeguarding educational rights and ensuring non-discrimination in education. It upholds the right to establish private educational institutions subject to certain conditions. The actions of the Taiwanese government against the Taiji men in flagrant violation of these principles underscore the importance of upholding Article 26 to ensure equal access to education and the promotion of educational activities for all. The FFWPU in Japan suffered a similar fate. And now let me talk about hate speech, a maligning force in educational spaces. UNESCO, the, uh, UNESCO's dedication of this year, actually this year's in International Day of Education, to countering hate speech acknowledges its escalating impact, particularly with the proliferation of social media. I mean, not only social media, even mainstream media. It creates a hostile and intimidating environment that discourages certain groups and individuals from participating in the educational enterprise. By perpetuating negative stereotypes and prejudices, hate speech impedes the development of inclusive and respectful learning environments. 
<clears throat> now the detrimental impact of hate speech perpetrated by the media in the case of the FF FFWPU in Japan. The persecution of the Family Federation gained a new height after a tragic event on July the 8th, uh, 2022, when a man killed former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who had sent a video message before that uh, to an organization affiliated with the Unification Church. Out of grudge, because he, uh, he hated the Family Federation, out of grudge, the 40-year-old Tetsuya Yamagami shot and killed Abe during a public speech. A press conference on July the 12th further fueled the false narrative that church was to blame for the assassination, initiating an unprecedented witch hunt against the FFWPU in Japan. To gauge the extent, it was me who, who did that, to gauge the extent of media coverage regarding the Unification Church in Japan, a Google search of the keywords Japan Dissolution Order Against the Unification Church yielded an astounding 1,180,000 results in a mere 0 0.35 seconds. Just imagine what's out there. Incited through the media, members of the church, including families and children, faced a barrage of threats of harassment, bullying, hatred, violence, and even acts of physical violence. Over 40 hate incidents were reported within a few months until the end of uh, 2022. And by now, by now, these are many more, of course. The, the government's alignment with the media narrative resulted in a severe consequence, in severe consequences. In including the request of a dissolutionist movement that had committed no crime. Just imagine, uh, if this is possible, what is possible with other religions? Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, I'd just like to remark the exercise experiences of Taiji Men, the Unification Church, serve as a stark reminder of the imperatives to safeguard educational rights and combat hate speech. Actually, we have to fight. Uh, we have to combat hate speech. And also, we have to combat government just following, uh, ju jumping on the bandwagon of media. This is also we have to fight. You are muted, Peter, you are muted. Already for a long time? No. Okay. Now you hear me? Okay, good. So I, I just repeat the last paragraph. The experiences of Taiji Men and the Unification Church serve as a stark reminder of the imperative to safeguard educational rights and combat hate speech. Actively addressing the pervasive influence of hate speech can pave the way for more inclusive and equitable educational environments, ensuring that the fundamental rights of offering and receiving educational services are preserved for all, for all, irrespective of their beliefs or affiliations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter, for this speech. And uh, uh, as I said, we know at some stage you will have to leave. And uh, now we have a video for uh, uh, International Day of uh, Education uh, 2023, actually, uh, by the uh, United Nations uh, General Secretary. Education is a fundamental human right. It's the bedrock of societies, economies, and every person's potential. But without adequate investment, this potential will wither on the vine. 
It has always been shocking to me that education has been given such a low priority in many government policies and in international cooperation instruments. The theme of this year's International Day of Education reminds us that to invest in people prioritize education. Investment is critical to achieving Sustainable Development Goal 4. Last year's Transforming Education Summit gathered the world together to reimagine education systems so every learner accesses the knowledge and skills required to succeed. Over 130 countries made commitments to ensure that universal quality education becomes a central pillar of public policies and investments. A call to action on educational investment and the establishment of international financing facility for education created a fresh push on domestic and international financing. And the summit launched a range of global initiatives to mobilize support for education in crisis settings, girls' education, founda foundational learning, transforming teaching, digital tools and green education systems. Now is the time for all countries to translate their summit commitments into concrete actions that create supportive and inclusive learning environments for all students. Now is also the time to end all discriminatory laws and practices that hinder access to education. I call on the de facto authorities in Afghanistan, in particular, to reverse the outrageous and self-defeating ban on access to secondary and higher education for girls. And I also encourage countries to place education at the art of preparations for the SDG Summit in 2023 and the Summit of the Future in 2024. Most of all, I urge civil society and youth to continue calling for more and better investment in quality education. Let's keep the flame of transformation burning. Let's deliver education systems that can support equal societies, dynamic economies and the limitless dreams of every learner in the world. And after this message, uh, we can uh, give the uh, floor to the uh, second speaker of the first uh, session, Dr. Davide Suleiman Amore, who is a member of the Italian Society for History of Religion, a lecturer in history and uh, literature, and uh, secretary of the Islamic uh, Association uh, as Salam. So, David, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, good evening or, do, or good morning, whatever you are. Um, my, I will say something about a comparative analysis uh, about education between Islam and Thai Jimen a comparison between the perspectives on the fundamental right of freedom of education in Islam and Taiji men. Islam places a significant emphasis on knowledge and education. The Quran, the holy book of Islam, encourages believers to seek knowledge, stating in which means read in the name of your Lord who created. And that is said to be the very first verses revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, this is to underline uh, the importance that is given to education in Islamic doctrine. Education is considered a means to enlightenment and personal development in Islam. The Prophet Muhammad also emphasized the importance of seeking knowledge, stating that the ink of scholars, using writing, is weighed on the day of judgment with the blood of martyrs and the ink of scholars outweighs the blood of martyrs. This hadith is reported by Imam Asuyuti in his book Jamil Sarir, which is which means the small compendium. Also Ibn Abdul Bar in his work Jamia Bayan Il Muafadlihi which is the great compendium of knowledge and courtesy, 
and uh, Ibn al-Jawzi in Al-Hilal al-Mutanahiyya fil Ahadith al-Wahiyya, which means uh, the virtual series of the Hadith of the Revelation. The Islamic tradition promotes the idea that education in Arabic tarbiya should be accessible to all, regardless of gender or social status. Historically, Islamic societies have been centers of learning, contributing significantly to various fields such as science, medicine, philosophy, and literature. Suffice it to remember the University of al Qarawin, located in Fez, Morocco, established in 859 CE by Fatima al Fihriya, a wealthy and devout Muslim woman. The university is recognized by both UNESCO and the Guinness Book of Records as the oldest continuously operating educational institution in the world. Initially established as a mosque, the institution evolved into a comprehensive educational complex over the centuries. It played a pivotal role in preserving and advancing Islamic scholarship, science, and culture during the medieval period. The mystical branch of Islam Sufism refers to the term Atarbiya as a spiritual education or development too, emphasizing the cultivation of one's inner self and the purification of the heart. The role of education is multifaceted and plays a crucial part in guiding individuals on their spiritual journey. It involves guidance from a spiritual teacher in Arabic, shaykh, self-discovery, health purification, mystical knowledge, ethical values, community engagement, and the integration of knowledge into daily practice, all contributing to the seeker's journey towards spiritual enlightenment and closeness to God. In all these, the role of the shaykh is pivotal, the shaykh serves as a mentor, guide, and facilitator of the spiritual journey of the disciples. The relationship between the shaykh and the disciple is often deeply personal and characterized by trust, respect, and the commitment to spiritual growth. Taiji men, a group teaching self-cultivation, martial arts, and qigong, and promoting a holistic approach to life may have unique perspectives on education. Holistic practices often emphasize a balanced development of the mind, body, and spirit. In such philosophies, education extends beyond academic knowledge, encompassing physical well-being, emotional intelligence, and spiritual growth. The holistic approach may encourage a broader view of education, emphasizing the interconnectedness of various aspects of life. Freedom of education in this context involves the freedom to explore diverse dimensions of personal development, including physical health, emotional well-being, and spiritual fulfillment. That same even in this case, the role of the spiritual guide, in this case called the Shifu, is fundamental. In the ancient tradition, Taiji Men belongs to a Shifu refers to a highly skilled and experienced master or teacher. The role of a Shifu in this tradition spiritual teaching goes beyond physical movements and martial art techniques. It encompasses the transmission of profound philosophical and spiritual principles. Overall, the concept of freedom of education is deeply rooted in both Islam tradition and Tajiman culture. Islam advocates the pursuit of knowledge as a means of enlightenment and personal development, while a holistic approach such as that of Tajiman may encompass a broader spectrum of education.
regardless of the specific cultural or religious context, the common theme is the recognition of is the recognition that that education is a fundamental right that should be accessible to all, fostering individual growth and contributing to the betterment of society. Spreading this education is a fundamental human right, one that was denied to Taiji men as their progress was halted and disturbed by the so-called Taiji men case. It is great time to solve the case so that the educational journey of Taiji men may continue undisturbed for the greater good of its DC, Taiwan, and the human. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Davide. I'm sorry I was not uh, perhaps uh, muted during the, your uh, speech. And uh, now I believe uh, we, uh, I should pass the podium to Willy Fautre, who is the director and co-founder of our co-organizing entity, Human Rights Without Frontiers. And it will be Willy Fautre who will introduce the next video, second video, and then the second uh, session. Thank you, Massimo. And so, so as uh, you said, and I, well, first of all, welcome to everybody, whether it is from America, Europe, or Asia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, and so, as you said, uh, we will start with uh, a video and afterwards, uh, I will uh, introduce the second session and present uh, each of the dizzy. Hi, I'm Margaret. I'd like to share with you a wonderful story about how a silent girl went on her journey of love and peace. When I was studying in the third grade of elementary school, my parents' colleague recommended us to join Tai Chi Men with my family. Even though I didn't quite understand why I should practice Qigong, and had no idea about the true meaning of life or cultivating oneself. Looking back over the years, I finally found the answer. After graduating from college, I joined the service industry and achieved a managerial position within just two years. I used to be a silent girl who wasn't good at expressing myself. Someone once made fun of me, saying, why are you so dumb? They also called me cold fish because I always had a poker face. However, things changed for the better after becoming a Tai Chi men dizzy. Sure Fu taught me to utilize the wisdom of yin and yang to balance my life. Brothers and sisters of Tai Chi men also encouraged me a lot. No matter how badly I spoke, I would always receive thunderous applause. Gradually, I became fearless and could express myself with confidence. With the guidance of Sure Fu, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to travel abroad as a volunteer for a United Nations NGO. On the journey of spreading the idea of love, peace, and conscience with Shifu, I finally became open-hearted and was willing to share my love and care with those around me and even with the world. As Shifu declared his wish, a world of one heart, a wellspring of happiness, in San Francisco on August 1, 1999, I realized our heart is the source of happiness, and the connections between people are destined. Sharing kindness and joyfulness is how we can make the world better. As we always must, no matter what, the best thing in my life is being a part of the Tai Chi Men family. Having Sher Fu, like my father, and the brothers and sisters here, caring and supporting each other whenever facing challenges, everything in life becomes easier. Sher Fu always reminds us to have fun in studying and working, taking it easy just like playing games. This wisdom of mindset changing makes me understand that seeing things in different ways can totally change one's life. With Sherfu's teaching, I eventually realized the meaning of life is to become a better version of myself. The essence of happiness is not about external means, but from the gratitude for life and inner peace within. I want to share my story to encourage you, cherish and believe in yourself, you will then find the true happiness of life. This is the wisdom of life I learned in Tai Chi Men. I am very grateful and I hope that all the people who feel lost can find the direction and hope in life, just like how I did.
thank you very much for this nice uh, video, and I will certainly not disagree with its content as a retired uh, teacher that uh, education, school education, family education uh, is uh, very important, and uh, teaching is also a very noble task and commitment. Now, <clears throat> uh, my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> This The title of uh, this conference <clears throat> is quite appropriate for uh, enlightening the never-ending fight of Taiji men for, for justice. Freedom of education is a cornerstone of all other fundamental freedoms. It aims to preserve and amplify the wealth of knowledge accumulated over the centuries so that it can be shared with the whole of humanity today and with future generations. This heritage of human knowledge is a treasure that is constantly brought to fruition through further research. The philosophy of Taiji Man dates back thousands of years and has survived to this day because it was preserved like a precious jewel before reaching Dr. Hong. Through his experience, he has enriched its content and through education, he has shared it with tens of thousands of people in search of truth and meaning in their lives. Individual conscience is at the very heart of Taiji Man's existence. Whereas for a very long time, it has been relegated, even ignored, in and by a world dominated by scientific materialism. Scientific research explores the world of matter, time, and space with its own methodology, and it is welcome. It has advanced human knowledge and passed it on from generation to generation over the centuries with its mistakes and course corrections, but to come closer and closer to the realities of human life. Scientific materialism, based on legitimate scientific research, is, however, an ideology that is increasingly contested because it claims. It claims that everything can be explained in a materialistic way and only in a materialistic way. Consciousness dominates the material world. It is not subjected to it. Consciousness characterizes our human nature. Human beings are the only living beings on earth who are aware of right and wrong. Consciousness plays a vital role in Dr. Hong's teachings, which need to be protected nurtured and developed in space and time. Yet, this can only be done through education. Moral values are the blood that irrigates human spirits. The family, the school, religious and philosophical movements are the arteries and veins through which the blood of spiritual values can give oxygen to the human conscience and make it grow. This is what Taiji Ben has been doing for decades, teaching and training the disease to live according to their conscience and their spiritual values, whatever the price to be paid, and never to compromise. Integrity, dignity, respect, compassion, love and peace are at the heart of their values and of their life. Taiji Men's teachings make the disease aware of good and evil. Taiji Men's teachings are the blood that irrigates the soul of the disease. The best ambassadors of Taiji Men's teachings to the outside world are the disease themselves, because they are the living testimonies that their spiritual values can regenerate individuals and society. However, to fight for the well-being of people also means to fight against evil.
evil forces. One of those evil forces that Taiji Men has been facing for over two decades and a half is the National Taxation Bureau and its ally, Prosecutor Who, nicknamed the Judicial Rambo. The fight against evil through nonviolence and with a peaceful but determined heart is the only path compatible with human conscience. On the occasion of this day, an international academic conference uh, was held in Taiwan on the Judicial Day over the last few days to study the possibilities of resolving the moral problem posed to Taiji Men by dark forces who wanted to destroy Dr. Hong's movement. The outcome was that solutions do exist. Parliamentary elections were held in Taiwan this month. The new government has a new opportunity to examine possible solutions and put a final end to the Taiji Men case. Let's do everything so that uh, hope becomes a uh, reality. Thank you. And now I will introduce the first uh, speaker, uh, Marianne uh, Chuang, who is an accountant. The floor is yours, Marianne. I like the spelling of your name. Thank you, Willie. Good day, everyone. I'm Marianne. International Education Day commemorates the contribution of education to promoting peace and development. The education, I realize, is the ability to change or influence <laughs> oneself, others, society, and the nation through various means. In November 2023, I followed Dr. Hong to attend the 24th International Conference of Chief Justice Pieces of the World, hosted by City Montessori School in India. The concept note for this conference specially quoted Dwight Davy Eisenhower, there must be law, steadily invoked and respected by all nations, for without law, the world promises only such meager justice as the pity of the strong upon the weak. This quote emphasized the importance of rule of law. Furthermore, the conference had a topic focusing on the role of non-governmental organizations, civil society, and small coalitions in global governance. Combining above points, I believe that nations need to build a society that abides by the rule of law and uh, respects human rights to truly protect the people. Citizens, non-governmental uh, non organization and civil society play a crucial role as the driving force and the educators behind the endeavor. Tercession is the compulsory transfer of people's property to the state using government authority without compensation. It is a deprivation of people's property rights. Therefore, taxation should be stipulated by law. The famous American political and legal scholar John Marshall stated, the power to tax involves the power to destroy. This highlights the potentially destructive nature of the authority to navy taxes. It is evident that the arbitrary abuse of power by tax authority has long been a source of suffering for the people. However, over the past 20 to 30 years, countries around the world have been actively working on legislation to protect the right of taxpayers. The aim is to safeguard the fundamental rights granted by the Constitution. This effort seeks to ensure test payer rights, achieve fair test fairness upon due process of law. In 2017, Taiwan implemented the Test Payer Rights Protection Act, marking a new milestone of test payer rights. 
However, because law enforcement officials are unable to change their mindset and disregard the law, the unjust cases still occur due to administrative arbitrariness. Despite having laws in place, the rights to life and, and the property of the people are still not properly protected. I'm a content, conti continuously participating in the Taiji Man test case. I have witnessed Taiji Man exhausting all possible administrative and judicial remedies over the past 28 years. Despite the numerous petitions to various gov government entities, we are still unable to revoke the illegal test bill. This has made me realize the shortcomings in the rule of law and the rights of the taxpayers in Taiwan. The Taiji Man injustice test case is a typical case of administrative arbitrariness and abuse of power. It originated from the political purge in 1996, where the prosecutor fabricated a false case using false witnesses and false evidence. The National Taxation Bureau issued the baseless test bill solely based on the prosecutor's unverified indictment materials without conducting any investigation. It stands a landmark case of using criminal and taxation as means to persecute human rights. In 2007, the criminal case has vindicated, and for five out of the six years covered, the NTB concluded that there were no tax issues. However, they still not revoke the illegal tax bill of 1992 with the same nature. Moreover, the hardy site for safe cultivation was unlawfully oceaned and seized by the government. The Tai Chi Man case has been referred to by scholars as the demon revealing mirror of criminal and taxation. Through each process, including tax assessment, injunction, administrative remedy, litigation, and the compulsory as execution. It highlights the illegal abuse of power by government entities. This situation has rendered the people unable to obtain effective remedies, religious freedom, and other fundamental human rights granted okay. by the Constitution and the, and the two international human rights covenants. However, the Taiji Man, Shifu, and the Dizi have transferred the 28 years of suffering and hardship into a driving force for protecting tax reform in Taiwan. Taiwan Tax Law Association Secretary General Luo Wang Jian'an stated that Tai Chi Man Tax Case has given rise to the Taxpayer Rights Protection Act and uh, contributed to change in judicial opinion from the administrative court in indirectly benefiting the people. Professor Huang Junjie, National Zhongzhen University expressed deep gratitude for the persistency of Tai Chi Man, contributing the significant progress of Tai test law research in Taiwan. He mentioned that in the past, it, it was impossible for constitutional litigation on test matters to declare, declare laws and order uncons unconstitutional. Still recently, there have, have been declaration that legal restriction on human rights violate the constitution. Professor Li Kuizhong from National Zhongxin University also commented that Tai Chi Man test case involves multiple legal aspects, touching upon almost every law related to the case. He seems it is an excellent teaching case and hopes that the Tai Chi Man case becomes a legal precedent, bring, bring all laws back to normal and making Taiwan a democratic and rule of law country. 
All these statements emphasize the power of citizen education and the government oversight demonstrated by the Taiji Man test case. The Taiji Man test case has been submitted eight times to the United Nations Human Rights Council by non-governmental organization, serving as a reminder to the global community that even in democratic and the rule of law country, human rights abuse can occur. Despite the 2022 report on international religious freedom, noting that Taiwan safeguard religious freedom, the Taiji Man case represents a historical infringement on religious freedom. Without corrective measures, it difficult to prevent the occurrence of harmful behavior again. The essence of Tai Chi Man has never changed. The monetary gift that a Tai Chi Man did submits to the Shifu as a sign of respect is considered a, considered a gift, expressing sincere sentiment. It qualifies a tax-free income, yet only the income from 1992 was taxed. It constitutes an obviously different racial treatment in the eyes of the law. This violates the principle of administrative self-restraint and the constitutional e e e equality. Regarding the illegal administrative sanction, the government should accord, uh, in accord with the law revoke it. Moreover, the NTB has admitted its mistake and it should actively rectify the error, restoring justice to the people and returning the unlawfully ocean sacred site. Only through such action can Taiwan really implement trans transitional justice and become a country that truly protects religion freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marianne Shuang, uh, uh, for telling us that uh, education is a major tool to be used to promote peace and development, to enhance gender equality, to eliminate poverty and hunger, to improve health, to improve the rule of law and the uh, respect of human rights. The fight of Taiji Man was also praised by scholars uh, because their case was the what is called the demon revealing mirror of criminal taxation. Unquote. One of those scholars, you said, the Professor Wang Junhe from the University uh, National Chungcheng University, expressed deep gratitude for the persistence of Taiji Men contributing to significant progress of tax law research in Taiwan. He mentioned that in the past it was impossible for constitutional litigation on tax matters to declare laws or orders unconstitutional. Still recently, there have been declarations that legal restrictions on human rights violate the Constitution. And he thanked uh, Taiji Man, that professor, he thanked Taiji Man for opening the eyes the eyes of the Taiwanese and of Taiwan and educating them through your fight uh, against uh, that sort of corruption. And now I will give the floor to Juni Hung. Floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Juni from Taiwan. Currently is working in the biotechnology industry and also serving as a, a volunteer for full power. Following the Dr. Hong Daozi, the Shifu of the Taiji Man of the President of the Foundation of the World Peace and Love, I have been the promoting the idea of the love and the peace. Last October 2023, I had the privilege of joining Dr. Hong in attend the uh, 
2024 Global Chief Justice Industry uh, in International Conference hold at the uh, Montessori School in India. The conference focused on the theme of the uniting of the world through the excludable world loyal and uh, effective global government for the children. Through the Chief Justice the Conference, I witnessed the justice from the different country coming together. And memorable a moment was during the press conference when Taboro Tito, the ambassador of the uh, Kuro bus to the United Nations, spoke about the goodness peace and the love in the world. He emphasized that the, it starts with each individual, especially leader who must do more to continue to surpass themselves. Leader need have a confidence and the most important is conscience. Taboro Tito strongly agree with Dr. Hong and the foundation of the world peace and love for their the practice actions toward love and peace together. They are committed to promoting the establishment of the United, uh, United Nations Commemorates Days, International Conscience Days. During our visit to the India, we also visit CNS school and share our idea with the principal. She experts that the message with recovering is about uh, ensuring that our the conscience is awakened. Understanding that what is right and wrong and covering this understanding through children is a uh, uh, crucial. It is uh, essential of adult of the uh, comprehend. This is what we lay the confidential confidentials for the children. If we can understand the concept of the right and the wrong, and transmit those messages to our the children, teaching them the importance of the mutual respect, and the love for the gods. I believe the whole world will become the beautiful place. My children has been participant in the tax for reform activity seeing um, children hold. And through this, I expanded on the underlying purpose to him. We can using all the power to correct unjust text the loyal and help those the who are the effective. From the young age, he developed he developed a correct understanding of the right and the wrong. In the school accents, he discovered that the children mistakenly giving him extra po points. But he honestly informed the teacher to deduct the uh, undeserved the score. This is also classmates the who was the biologist disorders intensity. My children would share the uh ex ageless rate behavior of his classmates. And no one dared to approach him. I asked my children if he had tried to talk to him, and uh, he admits he was the affair. I continue to encourage him, and uh, over the course of the third masters, he told me that he could success prevent the classmate from getting angry is a good news. Whatever the close uh, classmate start become the agitated, 
My children would quick ask him to live in and uh, sing -si and uh, calm down. After a few the instants, the class met aggressive, heavy, reduced, and he improved through the positive and the friendly the interaction. As a parent, I had set a seat adjustment the urgence my children not to isolate and uh, violently the children, as no children should be abducted. Every person deserves respect and care. The Shifu of Taiji Man, the president of the Foundation of the World League, the love, Dr. Hong Daozi, delivered the speech with the ten things, conscience, is arc human humanity, and the compass of the sustainable futures. He expressed the hope that the leaders, chief, uh, chief justice, justice is the leaders from the, around the world would be come together with a sharing belief, and uh, through the guidance path of the future development, akin to conscience, compass to the satiety, navigations. The conscience compass like the become of the right, of the light. It emits leaders' bright way for the development of the next generations. The sense moved me deeply. It was a navigate of the positive, energy and the goodness. If leader can embrace those of banner violence, so it can be benefit to the greater number of the peoples. Leading of the past first nation ends, in turn happy the children. During my uh, January, I come to understand the important the leaders uh, misguide the policy of the idea can have the fair reaching effect under the country. It the people can even is the education assistance. Let us say in Taiwan, if the under being is not straight, the low being will be crop. Crop. In the 1219 Tai Chi Man human rights persecutions Accidents. Tai Chi Man decides poor, forced the unjust treatment, just like the unjust treatment of the Tai Chi Man itself. The judiciary has already ruled Tai Chi Man in connection of the text free, and all the defendant who were the unjust Defendants have received comprehensive from the government. The country willing to investigate the case. Finding a the major violence by the perse persecutor and the seven major violations of the country and of the facts in depth of the Taijiman case. Is a forced persecutions under human rights violations. The case continued to be the integral with a force, text K linked, and even planning Tai Chi Man practice size is being the actions of my eight years. Old children ask me why this is happen, and uh, express his uh, confusions. This is has a uh, led him to has a uh, significant a doubt about the justice systems. The government that in engage is uh, such actions can be hardly earned 
the true truth of the its people that along their trust in the education systems. In today the world, overall development has a veered toward imbalance with the dysfunction government, the society in states of continued decay. As a result, people find the difficult to live in the peace of the presbytery. Leading of more the chaos under lost the uh, crucial standard. How can education possibly be suit? Only we each, only when each individual awakeness, there the conscience, practiced kindness, and the thesis. Redvention can be worth move toward future and the peace of the humanity. I sincerely have a hope that the government official in Taiwan can awaken the conscience within themselves and the power of the goodness. It's a form the foundation of the fosters positive education environment and the unwell economic circles. However, it is a key of the every global city citizens of collections drive the transformations of the world. I'm honored to participate in this international forum, share my experience. Thank you all. Thank you, Judy Hang. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much. You, you said that last year you attended uh, the 24th Global Chief Justices uh, International uh, Conference held at uh, Montessori School in India. Montessori is very uh, well known uh, in Europe and uh, the schools uh, as well. And I also discovered on that occasion that uh, it, were, it had expanded to a country like India. And so in your presentation, you noted that the uh, principal of the school agreed to the message of Tai Chi Man that conscience must be awakened. People must understand what is right and wrong. And conveying this understanding to children in the school education system is absolutely crucial. And this is also what you experimented with your own child, since is childhood, you have taken him to tax reform demonstrations and activities. And through this, you have explained him, taught him the underlying purpose of this fight, which is to use your power to correct unjust tax laws and help others who are affected by them. From a young age, he has hereby developed a correct understanding of what is right and what is wrong. Taiwanese government officials should also awaken their conscience, unleashing the power of goodness, you said, because this is how a positive educational environment can be fostered. And now I will give the floor to Nick Su. Yeah, hi, uh, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, uh, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. So today my subject is uh, see the problems seriously and the solve the problem optimistically. So my name is Nick from Taiwan and uh, my current job is a semiconductor sales and also a volunteer of FOPO. Uh, in recent years, I have deeply realized that the global environment has been getting worse. The U.S.-China trade war and the COVID-19 has led to serious inflation, which has led to an increase in suffering index of the people around the world. As a citizen of the world, I have also deeply realized the significance of love and peace. It's truly good if the whole world works together, so I'm willing to follow in the footsteps of 
Dr. Hongdao's and the promote the concept of love and peace to the world. Uh, look back at the historical world. There have been many major disasters, like a conflict between different religions, two world wars, and the modern colonialism. They are all prosecutions on human rights. In recent years, uh, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, Israel-Pakistan war, the political conflict between North and South Korea, Taiwan and the mainland have made the entire world more turbulent. History is always repeat itself. I vaguely feel uh, it's the third time a world war is just ahead of us. Is there anything we could do to make this world a better place? In fact, everyone can contribute to society we live in by around our own conscience and injecting positive and good force into society. The world will definitely to be more stable. I'm very grateful to Dr. Hong Dao for giving me the opportunity to participate in 2024 India Global Justice Conference this year. In addition to advocating legal and the tax reform, I can also have the opportunity to see that there are many people in the world who are working hard for this world, just like the one earth, one world, advocated by Montessori principle. It encourages everyone to put aside difference in politics, race, religion, for a betterment of this earth. It also echoes the 1219 Tai Chi Man case. The country ignores the importance and the fairness on human rights. Where should the world citizen go? Looking back at the, our own country, Taiwan, a few government officials issued many unfined tax bills for their own business bonus, causing social unrest. Not only wasting national resources, but also putting the people in a dangerous and a fearful society. Uh, Jin De Zhang, professor at National Zhongzhen University School, also talked about the Tai Chi Man case. It is entering its 28 years. The administrative court dismissed it, but the National Texture Bureau continued to impose this case, which showed Ministry of Finance concept. I'm the biggest. I don't care about the court's decision. I don't need a law for tax. We just need a bonus from additional tax income. The NTB not only ignore the final judgment, but also ignore the seven violations list in the controversial investigation of Tai Chi Man case. They even fail to comply with Supreme Administrative Court's decision. It is ridiculous to bully one government and the five years. How can it let the people trust this government? In addition to caring about the national competitiveness, what can we do as a member of a global village? Here we also share with you part of Declaration of International Day of Conscience in view of fact that citizens of the world are independent and closely related. We encourage everyone to face international and national crisis with compassion, courage, and the true wisdom, and actively seek peace, harmony, and win-win solution to benefit the earth and the world. As a state in a both declaration, I will continue to uphold my conscience to do my best for the world as a semiconductor salesperson at work. When my own interests conflict with the interests of others, I will always ask my conscience, which decision should I make? I will make the best decision for all of us. 
And uh, every time when there's a product to be sold to the military industry, I will strictly review it and uh, not let the world to be polluted anymore. Of course, performance is important, but uh, justice are priceless. In additional, at home, I try to create an environment full of love for my kid and also adopt children from neural areas so they can grow up in a loving and a tolerant environment. So the children's heart will be filled with love and they will be able to do so when they grow up only by spreading positive energy to the world can the world have hope. I hope everyone can use uh, their conscience to inspire the world and uh, create a positive cycle of a butterfly effect to make the world a better place. Uh, thank you, it's my sharing. Thank you, thank you very much, Nick Su. Uh, <laughs> you, you also participated in that uh, uh, India Global uh, Justice Conference last year. And it seems that uh, this event impressed a lot of DZ, including uh, yourself. Uh, because in your case, it was an opportunity to see that there are many people in this world who are working hard to improve uh, human rights, uh, human beings, uh, starting from childhood. Just like the message of One Earth, One World, advocated by the Montessori School Principle, which encourages everyone to, to put aside differences in politics, race, religion, etc., for the betterment of uh, this Earth. And in view of the fact that citizens of the world are interdependent and closely related to, to each other, you encourage everyone to face international and national crises with compassion, courage, true wisdom, and actively seek peace, harmony, and win-win solutions to benefit uh, the earth and the world. One earth, one world, and one humanity, I think is a good slogan. And now I will give the floor to Melanie Wang. The floor is yours, Melanie. Thank you. <laughs> so, hello, distinguished scholars, esteemed guests, and ladies and gentlemen. I'm Melanie, and I stand before you today reflecting on the profound lessons learned from the tragedies of the World Wars, which have deepened humanity's yearning for peace. The pursuit of global peace has been relentless, Yet the current world situation remains chaotic. The Russo-Ukrainian war persists, and a recent conflict erupted between Israel and Palestine, leaving me deeply saddened for the local population, including the vulnerable elderly, children, and civilians who bear the brunt of such conflicts. Let's draw inspiration from Malala, a Pakistan girl who fearlessly advocated for women's educational rights becoming the youngest recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 at the age of 17. Her story shows that age or origin should never hinder anyone from changing the world. I feel fortunate at the tender age of eight, I had the unique opportunity to serve as an international volunteer for the An Era of Conscience movement alongside my Sifu and fellow brothers and sisters. We worked tirelessly to make the world a better place. We traveled to the United States to promote love, peace, and conscience. From Southern California to Northern California, we engaged in cultural exchanges, using our voices to spread messages of love and peace. Despite the challenges of being an eight years old, both adaptability and physical stamina were tested. Yet, my inner self was happy and fulfilled. I owe this incredible experience to my parents who introduced me to Taijiman at such a young age. At Taijiman Chigong Academy is an international nonprofit cultural group. Our Sifu emphasizes that individual well-being isn't enough. True goodness arises when everyone thrives together. When the bill of love and peace 
Marcifu leads us spreading love, peace, and conscience globally through cultural exchanges, bell ring ceremonies, and the Love and Peace World Leader Summit, even inviting influential leaders. Moreover, our Sifu imparts wisdom about navigating life, understanding the balance of yin and yang, and discerning right from wrong. This guidance has un- equipped me to maintain a positive mindset, greet others with a smile, and bring joy to friends and family. Even though I'm the only child in my family, in Taiji Man, my brothers and sisters are my family members. They accompany me through life's various aspects, sharing a bond and common topics that bring us closer together, fostering warmth and joy. However, in Taiwan, Taiji Man and Sifu have faced persecution by our government for 28 years. This injustice has deserved experts worldwide. In 2021, 25 international experts collectively wrote to President Tsai, urging a swift resolution. The Tai Jing Wen case, labeled as the Tax Law 228 incident by domestic experts, exemplifies the use of judicial and tax means to suspress human rights. Submitted eight times to the United Nations Human Rights Council. This false accusation against Taijiman formed a high-profile case of human rights persecution, leaving me curious and astonished at how these corrupt officials persist in holding and even advancing their positions. The Taijiman case is fabricated spectacle scripted by prosecutor Ho Kuan Ren. He definitely choreographed false menacing and evidence, engaging in the illicit building of charges. Shackling, the National Taxation Bureau plays its part by issuing baseless tax bills, neglecting any substantial verification, and solely relying on the prosecutor's personable indictment. The control ran has meticulously detailed eight major illicit actions committed by Prosecutor Ho Kuan Ren in the Taijiman case. And the National Taxation Bureau hasn't been innocent either, having committed even seven major illegal actions. Back in 2007, the Supreme Court confirmed our innocence, yet the administrative enforcement agency illegally auctioned our land. Despite evidence and incorrect tax bills, officials shamelessly continued their persecution. My grandfather is also a tax victim. Many years ago, he was notified by the International Revenue Service to conduct an audit. He took the account book to the IRS, but he unexpectedly received a tax bill that was 10 times larger than before. After understanding, the people in charge lost the account book and leave the tax on the same industry as the processing industry. However, for more than 20 years, my grandpa's company has been legally filing tax returns using the trading industry standard. Afterward, the people in charge admitted his mistake, and the manager also recognized the truth. So he said that I made a mistake, but he didn't, but he refused to correct it and saying that the country has no money. The tax bill won't charge as soon as it is done. Otherwise, he could go to file a complaint. Moreover, my Grandpa coordinated with the accountant to communicate with the manager of the International Revenue Service many times. However, they said that if you come again, I'll check our tax for five years. Many people persuaded him to stop struggling. At that time, before having an administrative appeal, people had to pay half of the tax bill or provide security first to, to avoid the fate of assets being enforced in Taiwan. My grandpa was very brave to have an administrative appeal for more than five years, but finally he lost. The company was seized and even the delivery truck was impounded. As a consequence, he was unable to do business. So he was forced to pay a tax bill that was 10 times more than the correct one in interest. At the end, he was so angry that he had a stroke. Later, I checked the information on the internet and found out that the tax Legislation in Taiwan is also very outrageous, with 95% of the people losing. Even if the people finally win the case, most of the administrative court judges are reluctant to find the facts and make a final judgment. 
Returning to the IRS is another appropriate punishment. The IRS reissues a tax, new tax bill by adding and subtracting the tax amount to return the case in the original point. Therefore, winning is not the real win. Administrative relief is repeated over and over again, forming a tax bill that never ends. Isn't the government trying to protect the rights of the people? How could there be such a ridiculous situation? So in this forum, I urge everyone to stand with me in supporting tax reform. Let's unite our efforts to change the unfair, the unfair ta national tax system, ensuring a future government with conscience and compassion. Together, we can ensure the voices of the people are heard, rectifying false accusations against hygiene men. I believe that once this landmark case is ratified, justice will prevail for all those facing unjust accusations. As long as we bravely step forward, we can change the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Melanie. I agree with you. We can change the world. And thank you as well for reminding us of Malala the Pakistani girl who dedicated herself to advocacy for women's and girls' education rights in her country, despite high risks for her life. Her courageous and selfless efforts led her to become the youngest recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 at the age of 17. Through her courage, she demonstrated that Regardless of age or origin, anyone can change the world. Of course, the purpose is not to obtain prizes. On the contrary, such a uh, commitment must be implemented with humility. And you also said that your grandfather was a victim of the National Tax Bureau. A tax official recognizing there had been a mistake and advised him to file a complaint, and unfortunately, justice was denied to your grandfather by the tax bureau. He was increasingly financially persecuted, and in the end, he was so angry that he died from a stroke. The conclusion could be, in this case, with the tax administration, enough, really enough is enough. Thank you very much for your testimony full of energy and confidence in the future. And now I will give the floor to Emily Hang. Hello, everyone. Good evening and good morning. And my name is Emily, is a person in the airline. And today I'd like to share about the uh, uh, con um, conscience voluntarily who spread love and peace across the cultures. In the age of the turmoil and the uncertainty, the rule of the conscience uh, voluntarily has become very more important. It's not just a mission, but a mission. A group of the people who straight with the promote understanding, respect, and honor among our cultures and fill out the world with love and peace. I'm a flight attendant with the 20 years of experience and the Tai Chi Man Di Zi. My chief Dr. Hong, as a Zhang Man Ren of the Tai Chi Man, once tell to tell me, flight attendant is a humbling and a blessing job. The advi this advice changed me, made me re against my associate over my job. And allow uh, allow me to bridge the bridge of the peace between the different cultures and the different countries with closest sky. And I was uh, fortunate to be a true messenger of the peace and uh, expect to win uh, many awards of the company, the Out Outstanding Staff. The award of the Outstanding Flight Attendant Award from the Severe uh, authority in the 2015 and the special projects of the company with the President Xiaoying to the British and the Jade Republic in the 2017. In addition, I have many unforgettable moments once I fly with the President Jade to the four country 
small countries in the center of the South America to participate in the special plan, served with the first meet between the Taiwan and China. But I also have a legend of serving the many political and the businessmen. However, our the although experience, the ones I'm most proud of the unforgettable is the 2017 visit to the Turkey, uh, Turkey with the our the full power visit mission of the uh, love and peace and the cultures and of the conscience. This experience not only the boldness my heart lies, but also make me deeply realize that the transmitting the love can be able to flux others and the those flux fluxes in the world. I like to share a story about my flight. However, once I fly to the uh, Bali back to Taiwan, the passengers on board with a very unfriendly attitude with my crew to ask uh, able to get the free uh, upgrade to the business class. I used a gentle attitude to the first time and understanding the passengers' need and the explanations, although not a meet uh, or her uh, unreasonable request, but uh, make her feel she has a uh, seriously I take care about his feeling. But after I left, uh, when we are uh, almost during the of uh, the safety check, people are uh, properly prepared to taking off. The crew asked her to fasten the seatbelt, but she yelling my crew again. And uh, that moment, I think I want to respond in the strong way to protect my crew from to being untreating the unreasonable. But I certainly remember the love and peace was uh, just like the war between the countries. If a leader could use love and peace to resolve the problem, there will be no war in the world. So I call myself and ask her first with the smile and ask her, would you like to drink some water first to calm her mind? And ask her, her why are we uh, asking her to fasten the seatbelt to protect her safe? And she just uh, tell me about the, the seatbelt is too tight and uh, she feel uncomfortable. Then I just uh, give her extension seatbelt and her feel better. When the passenger find, uh, finally get off the plane, she asked, uh, shake my hand and said, thank you for all the whole crew and all the attentive the service. It made me realize the importance of the mind and the comfort, confirm with the wisdom and the result, our the, uh, problems with the kindness and kindness. Titanman's uh, Qigong Authority is an uh, international non-poverty political welfare cultures group. Shifu and D is through the culture exchange, holding the bill, ceremony, and the love and peace world leadership submit to promote the love and peace and the cultures of the conscience around the world. Invite and influence leader to make the peace with wish Get together the war and action of the important world leaders and bring a stability to the world situation. So far, there are 139 countries and 530 leaders for all work of the life, including the six ahead of the state and the three, uh, nine of Nobel Peace uh, winner. winner. In the November uh, 2023, I had the privilege of the particulars in the World Justice Conference in the India with my Shifu, Dr. Hong Danzi. And the diligence gates to honor will be the president and the prime minister and the, uh, the Nobel Prize winners. They have the justice, have a lot of the world. Each of the then is an important leader who are the power of the change in these countries. We truly do negative the label and many Nobel guests during the last five days. And I give them my energy of my love and peace with my Sifu have always taught me. To all the important world leader presents, 
and to present the song of the children from the heaven in the different formers every day to plant the seed of the goodness in everyone's heart. I was very touched by the faith with the then important leader returned to their own country and began to imply the children's protect measures. Everyone's kindness unfolded like the butterfly effect. On the September 22, 2023, my Shifu delivery a switch at the Love and Peace Bell Ceremony in the New York, saying the human resolve is facing the very uh, precedent challenge. And the pray for the blast is the most effective way to help us to, to influence ourselves and witness our conscience. Conscience is the inner guide of the human being in the life guide us to the diligence between the right and wrong and to do the right things. He also appeared every once of the everyday source in the positive energies that the, the world need. And the very, that every person in the indigenous in kids link in the building's world security. In that code that changed the world, change the world in the one minute. And the longer as we are acquired for the moment every day, we are everyone's prey of the love and peace with their conscience. The positive energy they get together to all pure good through them will be present a butterfly effect. And the repose the goodness with the continue to explain and the spray over, over the world. We all know that the war between the Ukraine and the Russia and also bring the very two years. And when I saw the many news on the television, I feel very pains about when I saw their heart and their eyes on the news. My heart feeling um, feel very the suffering. So what can I do for that? the long distance about this world. I will be pray for them in my heart every day, hoping the world will be resolved and the disaster will be far away. In addition to praying, we can also be act of the conscience to awareness the desire to peace and the importance of the human right in the heart of the world. So, as the influence solving the power and the governments in the base of the human right and the conscience, we can resolve the pain and the present persecution of the people. We, we are all members of the global village and we can do more. And if we are all good and together, this speech of the Dr. Hong, I also invite all of you to be calm for a moment every day at the one time, no matter the time or no matter the place, so that we can unite our good thoughts, get, get together, bring the more people to act with the conscience, response each other's human rights, and bring the bright energy to the, this world. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Emily, for sharing uh, with us your, your rich human experience. Uh, of course, nobody, uh, not everybody, has had the opportunity of flying around the world for 20 years as a flight attendant. But this has allowed you to, to build bridges uh, of peace between different countries, uh, cultures, and, uh, and, and people. And uh, once you flew a presidential plane, you said, uh, to four uh, small countries in Central and South America to participate uh, in the special plane service for the first meeting, first meeting between Taiwan and uh, China, between Taiwan and China. This was really a privilege to be present at such a historical moment. But you also had the privilege of serving um, many political business celebrities 
But as you also said, solving a very unpleasant situation in daily life, normal life, can be much more educational. The example of uh, that uh, angry uh, passenger insulting your, your staff and uh, that you finally managed to control, I would say, and, uh, and calm down with love. And at the end, she was thankful to you about that. And you were surprised. Uh, but you see, people can uh, improve their mindsets, even uh, or just in a few hours. So the lesson you drew from that experience is that the transmission of love can influence others and thus uh, influence the, the world. Thank you again. And we have now reached the end of this session, and I will give the floor back to Massimo in Trovigny to introduce the very last part, the conclusions, and Marco Respinti. Floor is yours. Thank you, Willy, and thank you to all the DITS for their uh, important uh, and uh, inspiring uh, uh, testimonies. And uh, indeed, it's very moving uh, to see that uh, you care for people like Malala in Pakistan and many others uh, who are denied uh, the beautiful life and the possibility of receiving an education in Taiji men that notwithstanding all the harassment uh, in Taiwan, you were able to pursue even uh, traveling to India and other beautiful places in the world. And now, as uh, Willie anticipated for the conclusions of this webinar, I give the floor to Marco Respinti, an Italian scholar and journalist who serves as director in charge of Bitter Winter magazine. Thank you, Massimo. Um, and thank you all to, for giving me the chance and the honor to uh, try to elaborate a few more remarks as a conclusion to our important and important webinar today. Uh, today, we observe the International Day of Education proclaimed by the United Nations in 2018. This day has been set up to celebrate education as a fundamental right of human beings, as we discussed today. As our series of webinars aptly repeats, education is one of those rights that belong to all human beings by virtue of their very nature. Hence, it means that no government, no state, no institution bestow such rights on humans in force of its own power. They are so ingrained, entrenched, and enshrined in humanity that they define uh, its uniqueness. Thus, governments, states, and institutions can only recognize them as existing. Not only they can, they, above all, must. These human rights, among which education looms large, are untouchable and undeniable for this reason, because they are not the product of any human will or power, but reveal an aspect of a pre-existing human nature. For this peculiar and radical reason, when a fundamental human right such as education is denied through discrimination and coercion perpetrated by a government, a state, or any other institution, serious, serious violations arise. Education is one of those fields in which a truth is much more evident than in many other instances. The truth that when one suffers, all suffer. In fact, if even only one human being is denied education, all humanity is downsized in its objective dignity. In the educational field, human beings should also avoid easy mistakes. I will concentrate on two of the most common. The first is to think that education means exclusively instruction and, or schooling. It does not. 
instruction and schooling, while not strictly the same thing in themselves, are or maybe part of education, which is a broader and more comprehensive concept. Education can, in fact, be achieved in more ways and with more instruments than just those provided by schooling. Life is in itself educational, and families, ambience, and atmospheres are part of a broader school. Note that I did not use the prudential may, but the assertive are. In fact, life, families, ambiences, and atmospheres are always schools. They may be good schools or bad schools, but they are schools nonetheless. Hence the importance of cultivating healthy families, good ambiences, and apt atmospheres. The chief educational instrument of the broader school that is life based on families, ambiences, and atmospheres is the role model. In the school of life, human beings learn through precedents and by examples. Models become heroes to imitate and villains whose ways should be avoided. It is then fundamental to always offer the right example. Should a villain be admired as a hero and imitated, consequently, great evils would arise for the whole society. As for instruction, it should not be mistaken for the whole of education as well. While in fact education aims at the general uplifting of a person, instruction is the apprehension of specific notions and tools. They of course contribute to general education, but are not the same. They are instrument for a goal. The second mistake of the two I evoked earlier is to think that someone has the right to force human beings to conform to an extrinsic model that vilifies their sacred nature. Sadly, this happens so many times in today's world when arrogance and evil powers claim to know better than human nature itself and try to impose a violent conformity that they call education. In what I have presented so far, one all-encompassing concept is implicit and deserves now to be made explicit. Education is the effort to bring a human being up to its inherent, untouchable, and insuppressible value. A famous line from Italian poet Dante Alighieri in his Inferno Canto 26 verse 119 says in the classic 1867 English translation by American man of letters Henry Longfellow, quote, you were not made to live like unto brutes, end of quote. Men and women are not brutes, and education serves the purpose of reminding them of that. Here I used the verb to remind as Greek philosopher Plato used it, to regain an ideal condition that has been lost. All religions and spiritual ways consider human beings as wounded by a great fall that caused them to lose their original moral shape. If that happened, human beings were reduced to the condition of brutes. Hence, the necessity to educate them back to their original spiritual dignity. So education is an ongoing process of continuous and permanent uplifting that all single human beings mutually perform toward their fellows. This is a fundamental right of human beings that needs recognition and protection. At stake there is, in fact, the very nature of human beings. For this reason, the right to education must be guaranteed, both as the right to educate others and the right to be educated. The magisterium of the Catholic Church puts education at the core 
of the very short list of non-negotiable principles that must be always and everywhere guaranteed to realize a decent society. The first right of that, on that list is the right to life as the obvious free condition for every possible human action. Then it follows the first direct consequence of the right to life in the form of the first political human rights, the right to religious liberty. The right to education comes directly after. The connection among these non-negotiable principles is strict and logical. Once human beings are free and able to live, they address the most important question of all, one that has directly to do with the spirituality and the sense of life. In turn, that right to a supreme truth is iterated and substantiated by the right to live up to the intrinsic and deep human dignity implied by religious liberty. This right is affirmed through education. All this connects to the core of Taji Men's spirituality and Dr. Hong Tao Tse's teachings on conscience. For Taiji Men, conscience is innate in human beings and the compass capable of orienti orienting all actions to good. Dr. Hong teaches that going back to one's conscience is the solution to all problems. Conscience, in his view, has in itself the power to reawake and lead human beings back to their dignity after all their losses. It is then su the supreme instrument of a constant education of human beings back to their true self. Consequently, the Tajiman community is the extended family that educates Dizi or disciples under the guidance of Sifu or Grandmaster to imitate heroes and avoid the ways of the villains through the mutual nurturing of their spirit. So when the extended family of Taiji men is denied the liberty to educate its members freely and without harassment, an entire movement suffers. But also the whole society is deprived of an uplifting model that in different ways, some obvious and some in need of being discovered, has the power to inspire good deeds and affect the common good of the world society. When that liberty ceases to be guaranteed, so that society is reduced to a mere confrontation among brutes. And with these final remarks, I do thank the organizer of today's webinar, Chesnul, the Center for Studies on New Religion, and human rights without from here to take for taking the lead in um, calling us to remember the great danger that arise, arises from um, the negation of these fundamental rights education today we, we we dealt with and above all religious liberty in the case in the exemplary case of Taishman. So thanking you all for organizing the webinar, thanking the scholars who took the floor, and thanking the DZ who brought their uh, precious testimony. I salute everyone uh, launching our last video for today. Oh,
dynamic <laughs> indeed <laughs> <laughs> when is the next uh, webinar so that we can put that in our agenda <laughs> uh, 